Before we start our riveting look at, here's a word from our sponsors at Choice Provisions. Today's thrilling episode is brought to you in part by Dill and Rooties Cutie Patooties. It's their uh, children. That's Whoa. misspelled there. That, that there was misspelled. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Runner 3. Having capably concluded <laughs> another the puppet awe show. inspiring <laughs> adventure, Commander Video and Command Girl Video now find themselves vacationing in the famously flavorful world known as Foodland. Ooh. After victoriously vanquishing their adept adversaries in Foodland's semi bi weekly, semi annual Bratwurst pageant, for the you got all that, kids? Rapturous rapscallions. <laughs> rapscallions. I wonder how much fun Marnay had with the alliteration. The salty shores yeah. Suddenly and unceremoniously, here, oh. our convivial comrades <gasps> are smacked by a troubled tuna gram. Tuna gram. Hey. The dorsal fin what? dispatch asks them to make haste to a nearby alleyway known for its seedy clientele. <gasps> the invitation <laughs> feels <laughs> ominous, fishy even. You don't say. The same, they set out at once. Okay. It's not long before they find themselves face to face with an amicable and enigmatic individual who introduces himself as Cheese Throat. <laughs> He wastes no time it's the burger from Creature of the Krusty Krab. Oh gosh dang it, Timble Tot's back. Yup, the Timble Tot has returned. ...to infect the innocent foodland with something called... ...the Wheat Germ. The Wheat <gasps> Gas. What? No Healthier alternatives for everyone? We can't have that! The Tupper Wars of, the tupper yore. Wars of yore. <laughs> this is likely oh. just the beginning. Everyone knows that healthy food tastes terrible. The commanders thank <laughs> the vexing visitor Goodbye. and set off at once. Who? There's no telling where this is sure to be. For reality, he was a cheeseburger. Will take them, <laughs> but one thing is for certain: they may have left the oven on. Oops. <gasps> well, won't this be an explosive old time? Cause yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Mm. Take it away, Martinet. Come on. It's a call. I'm Charles Martinet, <laughs> and now it's time for. Runner 3! Thank you, thank you, Marcy. <laughs> Welcome to Runner 3. Um, in my case, I'm recording it off the Nintendo Switch, and yeah, what are you waiting, waiting for? for? It's, it's a video, video game! game. Oh, press, press, press button. Press, <laughs> press, button. Press, a, press a button. There you go. Okay, you okay, go. okay, I'll press the dang button. So yeah, Runner 3 um, came out well after uh, uh, Runner 2, uh, the Rhythm Legend of... Future Legend of Rhythm Alien, whatever that sometimes right. called. And, well, let's just say, compared to its predecessors, it definitely took a few interesting risks while still preserving the classical ga auto running gameplay of runner lore. Right, with a little bit of a. Uh, they had a little bit of a rhythmic thing to it as well, I thought. Ooh, mm -hmm. And this game, thankfully, I, I like to think, didn't sacrifice it too much, although you could tell with some of the sacrifices and um, risks they had to take, it's not quite as elegant as it used to be, but. Again, I can I can sort of look past it because I, I still have my fun. Yep, they're back. What is it again? Yeah, the, the weird hills. The oh. art style is always so wacky and weird. It's like it's like if Edmund McMillan went a little more happy-ish. Uh, yeah, like I'm not gonna lie, I've known this series ever since it like it started with the Bit Trip series way back in the WiiWare days. But never did I think that like when the series would transition to 3D, we would have stuff this uncanny looking so let's see how the game works if it let's comparing it to runner 2 and go time to so run yeah, um gameplay is honestly fairly identical to a previous games you're again you're an auto runner you can jump uh, whenever you see fancy um the further you progress into the game or at the very least uh the first world you'll gain additional abilities like being able to slide uh kick, kick obstacles and uh new to this game is double jumping oh nice <laughs> Which, let me just say this right now for the sake of future, saving future headaches. Mega. Um, don't go, don't go backtracking for everything this game has until you have everything, including the double jump. It'll mm. save you a lot of time and frustration. Oh, gotcha. Oh, and yes, you also have the ability to dance from the get-go. Oh, poor fish. Oh, that's right, the old taunt mechanic, which you can do to get bonus points in score mode. But mm. note that when you're and dancing, you can't do any other command. Yeah, the, frankly, it's, it's rather brief, but you have to, you do have to be on the ball. And or, you know, while you're auto running and hopefully don't fly no obstacle cut. And that's pretty much the key thing about Runner t Runner 3. Um, I know the developers have said otherwise, and in a way I can sort of see where they're coming from. But at the same time, I can agree with the most people that have played this game. It's a wee bit harder than the previous games. Really? Yeah, like, the game 
because of the way the game shifts its whole perspective and everything, which, again, is something I do wholeheartedly adore with this game, the whole way it plays with its perspective, and, well, it definitely gives it a far, a far richer personality than the previous two games, but it can definitely lead to some of the game's cheaper moments. Well, especially if you're not expecting it. Right. But, honestly, with a little bit of trial and error, this can easily, I honestly think this game's even better than Runner 2. So, yeah, I mean, I know I'm kind of in the more minority about that, but, again, like, as someone who didn't play that much of Runner 2 and go went into Runner 3, I was actually rather surprised how much I, mileage I got out of that, even if, by comparison, it's a, pa it's a tad shorter. Right. Oh, and, uh, yeah, and just to remind everyone about how the gameplay works, just keep running, dodge the mechanics, get these good bars for bonus points, uh, and I think you get goodies if you get them all, and, um... Yeah, if you get them all, you can go to, you can do, go to the uh, good old bonus oh. round. Bubbles. You jump down, jump in the cannon, and what? shoot for a bullseye. Uh, Just as, uh, here, here's a quick tip: always shoot the shoot the cannon button like a, a second after you sh you're, you put yourself in the cannon. Yeah, same. And uh, we need to get more goodies. Oh, gem path is now available. Mm-hmm. Uh, new to this game is a uh, gem path. Basically, alternate pathways um, in every level, which are generally harder, but they also have gems gems for you to collect, which you can spend at the shop. A briny solicitation. Uh, oh yeah, um, another thing that uh, Runner 3 introduces compared to Runner 2, um, this game has what they call hero quests. Really? Basically, what? every every couple of levels, you'll Ooh. encounter a rather kooky character who will have a fetch quest available for you. Collect three of a certain thing and return to them, and that's how you unlock characters. Oh jeez. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, and then uh, for Seely's sake, if at any point you get hit, you will go all the way back to the last checkpoint to restart that section again. You have infinite lives, technically, um, but, uh, whoa. Hello. What's this? Now we're riding on a little it's eggplant air aeroplane. So now you have to go, oh, so now you do B and A to change. No, 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 up and down. Oh, up and down. Honestly, that would be awkward. Oh, yeah. do, you... do you recommend analog stick or a D-pad? Um, either either one works, personally. That B is like, pad. This game doesn't require too much input from, like, the movement buttons in order to, um really get anywhere. Okay. It doesn't look it relies too much on precision. It will later. It's um, there, there, there are times, though, Seely, where precision is probably key in order to not get your ass whooped. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. There are hard difficulties. And, um, oh, yeah, by the way, if you're that big of a masochist, you could try actually jumping over the checkpoint and not activating it, and that yeah. gives you bonus points. Oh, wow. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and those uh, yellows, they, they look transparent, but I'm assuming those are actual physical blocks. They're little blockades. Uh, they will not open up until you beat the level for the first time, and those are usually uh, relegated to gem paths. Gotcha. Uh, now the funny thing is, um, even after you, the funny thing is, even after you beat the level, um, technically those blockades will be removed. But but um, the game will actually ask you if you want to take the gold default to the gold path or the gem path. And well, both options will still be open. But well, there's reasons for that. Like your request, for example. Hey, Briny guy. <laughs> Oh, thank goodness. The cavalry has arrived. Please, call me Sir Strumming. Uh -huh. And before you ask, no, I'm not a knight. Okay, he looked a little weird. My parents just wanted to name me Sir, and it made my life a nightmare ever since. Though I dare say I don't have it quite as bad as my sister, Noble Peace Prize winner Peace Strumming. Peace Prize winner Strumming. That's all I <laughs> In any case, I'm known for being quite the skillful baker. My treats are so tasty that can, they can have... That can, most can handle no more than a mere scent. The last person who dared take a bite died a delectable, but unfortunately quite painful, oh. death. Ouch. <laughs> I like to think they died doing what they loved, though. It isn't true, but I still like to think it. Anyway, down to business. I need three more salmon berries to make my trademark stargazy pie. You see, bring me these salmon berries, and I'll be sure to reward you generously. I never would have thought that Runner 3 came up with... Oh, hang on. You'll be able to find the first of them in the Milky Way. As for the other two, well, I can trust you can sniff them out. Do you have a nose or... In any case, good luck! So is this... God speed! So is this one of those things that we shouldn't bother doing until we've collected more power-ups, or...? Um, he... okay, so... Ow! Aww. By the way, the game does list how many times you die. Don't the whole it, of it? Mm-hmm. It won't... Have... Well, through the stage, anyway. Don't, it doesn't affect your score, as far as I'm concerned. It's just more more one of those ha ha sort of things. Oh, and don't worry, Celia. I realize now that was the strategic one because James wanted to make sure we can get all the gold again. Oh, okay. Right. So 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 even if you view that dialogue, you can still uh, keep. You can still you're 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 automatically um, embarking on the quest, even if you die. Okay. 
that's actually the one saving grace I will say about the backtracking in Runner 3. There's a lot of it, but at the same time, it's thankfully one of those games where you don't have to pretty much beat the game and beat the level of one shot, no death gets or whatever, in order to um, get anything done. Like, say, for example, the occasional puppets you'll come across in the game. You can collect them right on the spot, and you pretty much saved it for the rest of your game. So oh, you, you can just you kill can pretty you right much after. You could either, yeah, you could either kill stuff, or even better, you could just exit the level, and it'll still count as collected. Also, I also was kind of a bit bummed that they, as opposed to Runner 2, where if you get hit, you go all the way back, it just kind of quickly transitions. I can sort of see why they did that, though, considering, again, the the whole dynamic perspective this game is going for, because that would be kind of a nice sort if they tried, if they did that every time. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it would be. But anyway, our level's been completed, and the good old commander is rather high and mighty and not not at all worrisome about showing his buttocks. So the gem path unlocks <laughs> when you've collected all the gems? And now to call on a favor you asked of me. No need to thank me. I kind of want to do this too. Yay! This thrilling episode is brought to you in part by my phone number. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh, wow! <laughs> Martinet, and guess what? You're not. And now oh. it's time for <laughs> I swear, three. it's like this game knew I was gonna show this guy off because it's like I didn't think I was actually gonna get both of those lines like right in the there. Because yes, Charles Martinet himself is playable in the game. Was that improvised or was that? Yeah, there's Charles Martinet. Oh. Yeah. Guess what? Charles Martinet is a character in this game. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Now he actually, instead of voicing a platformer, he is a platformer. The meaty tree. Also, uh, and also I just noticed, is that the dude from Brutal- is that Jack Black's character from Brutal Mentioned? Oh yeah, he's one of the unlockables. Go, Charles! <laughs> I wonder if Jack Black himself yeah. actually hey! voiced him in it. That'd have been hmm. cute, but I don't think so. Probably well, Nick Winger. yeah, because none of the characters in the runner, runner, running stuff actually voices anybody, but, um, yeah, like, one thing that definitely took me by surprise is how short Marnay is compared to the rest of the cast. It's kind of uncanny. He's the shortest, way. he's the shortest guy. Uh, shortest Woo! next to Dave from, whoa, Dave! <laughs> Please make him dance. Yeah, look at him go. Oh, gem, what do the gems yeah, do? Yeah, it moves, it's awesome. The, again, like I said before, the gems are sort of its own collectible. You primarily use them to buy, um, costume options in shops. And let me just say, you you guys should be thankful I didn't show off the shop, because some of the options in that game can get really uncomfortable at times. This game is so weird. Like a turkey. <laughs> well, yeah, fucking turkey stuff. Uh, but that's pretty late in the game, though. No. I think a more a more glaring example is um, shorts made out of your own skin. Wait, what? what? That's, yeah, like, this game has a really weird, uncanny, like, Ren and Stimpy approach to humor. Yes, yes it does. This face room far almost looks like a me. A little bit. Oh jeez. He almost he almost looks like he almost looks like the butler in one of those animated movies I've seen. Oh, which one? He does the, look like the type. And the body Annie. structure the body structure kinda reminds me of a uh, Angela Anaconda. A little bit. Hmm. My name is Mario, hey hello! I was gonna say yeah. With the, I was gonna say with the way he's moving, I get that, Sealy. The sad thing is, even with the sad thing is, I think this art style is more appealing than freaking Angela Anaconda. Yeah. Well, Angela Anaconda was a weird aesthetic. I it was a bad show, and I, I don't know why even, we watched it. I don't even. I didn't even watch it as a kid. The only thing I remember it is that bit before the Digimon movie. Oh, that's right. All right, sorry, Martinet. We got we got a fire out of cannon now. Oh dear. Uh! Oh wow. <laughs> It'll be okay. I like can still feel his feet. That's like that at least. God, look at that schnoz. Yeah, his, Mario to shame. Yeah, I'll say I've yeah, seen him. His nose, his nose is not that long. No, it's not. So what so what do you do with all the puppets? Uh the it's puppets the are used to unlock that war Well, <laughs> that's true. That aside, um the puppets hey, um in this video. game. If you unlock all of them, oh yeah, can I also just say, of all the things that this series did not need to do, is to make a literal, sexualized, female version of Commander video. Yeah, it just didn't seem like it was need all that necessary. Uh, anyway, so sorry, anyway, so sorry, so continue. Okay, Ooh, so, uh, the puppet- So yeah, the puppets, um, if I'm not mistaken, you collect them all, you can unlock that world-specific cutscene. Let's go back. Congratulations. Really? And with VHSs, we can unlock retro episodes, so which are basically its own thing. Right. Ew, as a command girl video will demonstrate. Alright, let's check it out. 
So who's up for some good old Hanna Barbera fun? The great outdoors. Ooh. Let's see what this looks like. Best kind of fun. As my chair creaks eerily. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my chair does a lot of creaking itself, so you're fine. So, um, yeah, the game's quote-unquote retro levels are pretty much it, uh, pretty much the equivalent to like all those retro levels from the original game, though it also plays on very completely different rules. And by that I mean they forego the auto-running shit entirely, and it's a straight-up 2D platformer. Whoa. Huh. This Drawn is... in the style of a very modern-esque Hanna-Barbera cartoon. Huh. No shit. No, literally. That's little. That was their inspiration for this uh, gimmick. Collect the Gildens. Gildens. You can also double jump and dash to thwart a bad guy. Nice. So how nice. does this get hard? Oh, the track. The platform can be tricky at times. If you could read this, you made it. Nice. <laughs> you played games before. You can figure this out. <laughs> I got they it. Can? <laughs> So, yeah. Confirmed. You're a genius. Now go ahead and jump in that yeah. crazy looking hole. <laughs> so, yeah. The retro levels are basically very short, uh, usually minute-length levels where, again, they're 2D platformers. You're mostly you're mostly tasked with getting all these coins, or gildens as they call it, uh -huh. and that's pretty much about it. Uh, the gildens in themselves... Um, for, well, for starters, uh, you do need a certain amount of them in order to progress through the retro world in question, and they're also a secondary currency for the shop. Okay. So, um, take that into account. Now, as oh. far as I'm concerned, uh, Runner 3 only has three worlds in total, and that also applies to retro levels. But the funny thing is that the retro worlds in themselves actually are this, around the same length as an actual Runner 3 world. Really? Like, there's there's um, nine levels with a, with a oh. boss at the end of them, and, um, now granted these are much shorter than the regular levels, but, yeah, I think you get the idea of, like, overall length to the, to the, this and the, um, regular campaign. In fact, I will say, for a, for a, for what's essentially a bonus feature in the game, it's really well developed, if not mm -hmm. a bit tricky at times. Like, you could totally sell this off as, like, its own $10, $15 game, and I'm sure people wouldn't really complain. Mm, I can see that. Okay, we made it. And if you Ooh. die, and if you die, I'm assuming with old retro status, retro levels, right. if you die, I want you to go all the way back to the beginning. Yes. So mm -hmm. thankfully, thankfully, you don't have to like say go back to the back, back to the real world and get collect the VHS all over again. No, <laughs> everything you do in the retro level is relegated to the retro levels. So I've heard talk of people saying that they, they some people think this game is easier than two. Some people say it's a harder than both. It really de it really depends on your overall. Um, overall status with the series in question. Like I like I said like again, the developers said they think the game's easier than the first and second games, though I kind of feel that's a bit bullshit with the first one. But um that being said, like I I, I don't know. I can't really explain it to words. You'd have to play the game for yourself in order to decide on that. Though be warned that the game entirely uh right now costs $30. Uh 40 if you want to go physical. <laughs> Now, granted, with the amount of content there is in this game, I would say the thirty dollars is not really that bad, that bad of a price point, though. Yeah, and don't mind, don't mind that, um, don't mind the moon in the background. He's just having to get nailed time. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I guess this cigarette stuff is to die for. Wait, is he smoking a cigarette? Oh, yes, my he's friend smoking a cigarette. would love this. Oh, jeez. Oh, and I think, he was wearing a, okay. I think he was wearing a fez as well, so... Oh, Majora, you need to chill out of you. <laughs> I'm just enjoying the show from up here. You don't need to bring it any closer here. Oh, my God! <laughs> Imagine if that was the real thing, that Majora wasn't moving the moon, but rather the Earth itself. <laughs> Majora, darling, you need some flaws. <laughs> yeah, just... I, I, the retro worlds in themselves are just a, their own little ball of sunshine. But okay. on that note, ladies and gentlemen, um, that is it for our look at on Runner Three. I mean, in this schmuck's honest opinion, I I personally recommend it. It's a fun, it's a fun time. Even if you don't have the biggest like attachment to the Runner series, just be just be prepared though, because they this is a relatively hard game, and muscle memory is key in order to getting having a good time here. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so on that have note, um, I'm Jason Extreme. I'm Lucky Jack Twenty. Highway Princess Lita. And I am one of the upcoming DLC characters, Kenny James. <gasps> oh, God. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Until next time, everybody. Bye-bye. Showtime.